To maintain a perfect track, the line must be level both when there is no traffic on them and under traffic. The system of measured shovel packing provides a means whereby the amount of the length of line is out of level when under static conditions, and the amount that any particular sleeper is depressed by the passage of a train can be accurately and simply measured. From these measurements, the exact amount of chips which must be spread under each sleeper in order to get a perfect top on the line can easily be arrived at. The system can only be used where the ballast is suitable and not where the ballast consists of round gravel and sand. A gang for working measured shovel packing usually consists of a ganger, two men and a lookout. On their arrival, the ganger first inspects the stretch of line and makes sure that all chairs are screwed tight to the sleepers and that the rail is tightly keyed to the chairs. Where chairs are not in close contact with the foot of the rail, the key is knocked out and redriven while the sleeper is forced hard up to the rail. To measure how much the rail is out of level when no traffic is on it, a set of three sighting boards is used. The sight board, the intermediate board which is adjustable for height, and the target board. The ganger sights along the rail and locates two high spots, 80 to 120 feet apart, and they are marked. The sight board will be clipped to the rail at one high spot, the target board at the other. The boards must be exactly level. A spirit level is built into each. They must also be firmly clipped to the rail after every movement. The ganger sits behind the sight board. The intermediate board is clipped four or five sleepers away. It should be lowered till its scale reads zero. The ganger, looking through the slot of the sight board, sees the intermediate and the target. The yellow and black squares on the target appear as narrow bands. The intermediate is adjusted till the ganger sees the bands disappear and the intermediate's top edge coincides with the target's horizontal center line. The reading of the pointer against the scale is chalked on the rail below the intermediate board. This board is then moved four or five sleepers nearer the target and the process is repeated again and again. There is now a figure at every fourth or fifth sleeper. These are graded by quarter, half or whole canisters and a figure given to each sleeper. Before the examination of the line under traffic, the ganger strikes the sleepers and finds out by the sound which of them are hanging. To measure the amount of hollow under a sleeper, an instrument known as a void meter is used. An iron stake is driven firmly into the ballast about three inches from the sleeper and the void meter clamped to it. The turn that down end of the spring-loaded pointer rests on the sleeper, close to but not touching the chair. Its other end should be some distance down the scale. The friction pointer is pushed down till its pin rests on the spring pointer. Twelve void meters are provided for a gang and as many as possible should be set up before the passage of a train.
The train depresses the hanging sleeper. The spring pointer of the void meter goes up the scale, taking the friction pointer with it and leaving it at the highest point reached. After the passage of the train, the number of divisions between the two pointers is read and this figure chalked on the sleeper. There is now a void meter figure on every hanging sleeper and a sighting board figure on the rail at each sleeper. These figures represent the number of canisters of chips which must be put under each sleeper. Before the other rail is similarly measured by sight boards and void meters, cross level should be taken on straight track to ensure that there is no cant. Where there are two figures applying to a sleeper, they are added together. The result is the number of canisters of chips.